And just look at that. I mean, I couldn't love it any more than I do. It's so cute. Hello everyone, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Normally, I'm really excited to show you whatever it is I'm working on this week, but today is actually a little bit of a mixed bag of emotions because a dear friend of mine is facing pancreatic cancer for the second time. She beat it once and had four years cancer free, but now it's back. And you know when you say to somebody who's facing something like that, you say, if there's ever anything I can do for you, please let me know. Well, if you have sewing skills, sometimes that is something nice that you can do to be helpful to somebody who's going through a hard time. So while I'm not exactly excited today, I am really happy that I can use my sewing skills to make her something that's going to help her to feel cute and fresh and comfortable. I asked her what she'd like and she said that she'd like like a trapeze kind of A-line top because her surgery left a bump on her abdomen. So she wants something quite full. And I want to add some nice detailing around the neck to bring all the attention up to her neckline and face. So I've got what I think is going to be a nice idea. I found this blue and white fabric at the fabric store and it's just soft and fresh and pretty and I was really drawn to it. But then I liked it even more when I paired it up with the black and white version of the same fabric. Which is, it's not an obvious combination, right? Black and white and blue and white. It, it, it took me a while to, to really realize like that it actually works. I like the combination and it's just really fresh and pretty. So I'm going to do the trim out of the black and white. I went through my pattern stash and for the pattern I'm going to use McCall's 5583. It's got that trapeze line. This is meant to be a dress so I'll be making it shorter but I'll include the sleeve. I like the wide neckline of it. Um, that'll look really pretty on her but I've actually, I want to add more detail to that neckline. On graph paper, I sketched out the neckline that I want with this kind of cute little peekaboo V-neck set into that round neck. I've never done this kind of technique before with that little peekaboo, but I took my dog for a walk and thought about it, and I think I know how I can make that work in a really nice, clean way. So there'll be some nice techniques for me to show you along the way. So I'm glad you're here. Let's get right into it. I've cut off nine and a half inches, off the front and back off the bottom. This pattern is actually made for a woven fabric and I'm using it for a knit. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the dart. I don't like to have a dart in a knitted garment and so I'm going to be able to get rid of the dart and swing out the front to give even a little bit more fullness around the abdomen. I'll cut on the bottom arm of the dart just to the point and I'm cutting up from the bottom to that bust point and just leaving a little bit of a bridge there. And then all I do is swing that up to meet there. So I'm closing up the dart and look how it opens up fullness at the abdomen there. The tissue that I cut off can go back on underneath here. This is my plan for the neckline. And so this would be the original neck edge Basically, I'm cutting down the original front to make this size V, and I need to just add seam allowance there. So I'm gonna add a quarter inch to that line. There'll be a quarter inch seam allowance coming around the top here as well. The pattern is drafted to have five eighths of an inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna be sewing it at a quarter. Draw a line here for what would be the center front of the pattern piece. And that shows me this is how much I'm cutting down that V and how much in. So I'm cutting down the V exactly three inches. And I'm coming across one and five eighths. I'll go down three inches and over one and five eighths. Good. So the front is all ready. The back, I've also taken off the, the nine and a half inches off the bottom. The sleeve I'll be cutting here for C. Now, I don't like to cut out right on the line when I'm using a commercial pattern. The time to do that is when it's on, to, on the fabric cut once accurately. Okay. Now, the neck band that comes with this pattern is made for a woven fabric. So it measures the same as the front and I don't want it that long. I want it only 75% so I'm not going to use this pattern piece at all. We're all set to cut the blue and white fabric. 
And I always use the tip of the scissors for cutting notches, never the rotary cutter. And I'm just following one of the lines in the print. I want my neckband to be two inches wide, but I'll cut it a little extra long at this point. And then to make the little V, I'll also cut another piece that's two inches wide. It has to be twice this length plus some extra 13 inches long. Alrighty, so the first sewing step is going to be that front V. And I don't want any stretching to happen, so I'm going to do two things. One is, I've got a, just a little bit of tearaway stabilizer. I just want to cut a piece of tearaway stabilizer that is this exact shape of the V so that I can make sure I'm not stretching it. I'll just make that one inch wide. So that's my exact V shape. I also don't want the little band that's going in that V to stretch. So I've got just a lightweight interfacing as well. If I had just done stay stitching on this V, I think it would have stretched out just while I was doing that because it is a knit. So having this sort of template attached to it, I can now stay stitch and I know that it's the exact same shape that it started out as. I'm gonna have the stretchy part on the bottom so the feed dogs will help move that along and I'll be able to keep it in that shape. My tearaway stabilizer is in place to make that V keep its shape. And now I just wanna make a little snip right at the bottom of that V, just kind of coming in that same amount of seam allowance just so it can open out like that. Here's the piece for the V and I've got that folded in half, right sides together. Okay, so now, so I don't wanna bring this right up to that corner. I wanna have a little bit of a space there here. So as long as I am centered, looking good. Now I'm gonna use my erasable friction marker, which I love so much, and I'm just tracing off that V. Good. Also right on that line down and back up. And now I'm gonna cut away the extra seam allowance. You can hear heavy breathing, that is my dog. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna snip right down to that V. Good. Okay, that's ready. This is the exciting part. So I'm gonna now press those seams open and flat. Good, so the two little seams are pressed open and now look at the beauty of this. Oh my goodness. Like, is that magic or what? That's beautiful, right? I don't think I could love that any more than I do. And look at how fantastic that's going to look, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, beyond excited now, beyond. Okay, so. I'm gonna just sew close to these edges now, the same way I did, like with the little toe of my presser foot hanging out over the edge, I'll just sew down and up and trim this off, and then this will be ready to go into the V. I should have the uninterfaced side down because see how the presser foot's pushing this, so go this way. You always want the like looser side down so that the feed dogs can help it through. The feed dogs are those little teeth under, under there that kind of move the fabric along. Trim that up. Okay, people, here we go. I'm excited, I love this. Okay, so if one side looks better than the other, yeah, this side definitely looks better, so that's gonna be the outside. So now I'm gonna flip right sides together, bringing that down, yeah? And I'm gonna stab a pin right through the V there, connecting with the little base of my snip right there. I just have to leave that pin stabbed through at this point. I can't turn it back out because we've got to now spin. We're going to spin this around, bring those two edges together. And now I can put that pin back through. Beautiful. Okay. So now I'm going to sew down pretty much on the same line. I'll sew a little bit to the outside of that line, just so I don't have to unpick that sewing line later. 
I'll come right down to that point and then we're going to flip and come up the other way. Nice. At the last second, I'll take out that pin and one more stitch there. My needle's right at that V where they come together. Lift up and rearrange so that now we've got these two edges nicely together. That's fantastic. Are you ready to see this? I don't think you're ready. Do you think you're ready? Oh my gosh, look. Oh, I could cry. That's so pretty. Oh, is a little off center. It is, it's a little off center, isn't it? Darn it. All right, I think I'm gonna go back in on this side. I think I have to unpick a smidge at the bottom. Oh, so close to perfection. Now to get this really, really right, I'll just arrange it from the outside. Okay, I repin, make sure it looks good on the outside. I think we're looking golden. And now I'm gonna come back at it this way so that I can really hit that corner nice. Get right to that V, pivot around. Oh yes, well, it's still a little off center. You know what? I think she'll love it just as is. I could try to go in a little bit just on this side. Okay, I'll try. Oh yes, okay, okay, okay. All right, we are golden. That's just gorgeous. My tearaway stabilizer can go away now. And then I'm just gonna surge. You don't necessarily have to surge this, you could zigzag. And whenever I want to surge a skinny edge, I want to make sure I'm not coming in further than my sewing line. Can you see these two little bumps on the presser foot here? These two little bumps, they line up with the needles. So I can just guide my sewing line right up to this little bump and I know that this needle is not going to cross over my sewing line. You get what I mean? I like to have the good side facing up when I surge. And so I'll have the white facing up because that's what's going to show inside the garment. And so I want that little bump to just come to my innermost sewing line, not past. And I'm just going to let it trim off all these different threads. I'm being careful of what's going on underneath so I don't accidentally cut anything I don't mean to cut because I would cry. Now I'm going to wait for my needles to just cross this edge. There, they're off this edge. And then I can lift up and wiggle everything back under. Okay, press this flat. I've pinned it and I'm going to do an edge stitch and come right back. Okay, little edge stitch. Press it again just to set that stitching. Just trimming off the extra. So now you could completely do the whole front of your v-neck just like that. You'd have to do a back neck facing or some other way of trimming off your back neck. But that is a beautiful technique to do their whole front. I'm just going to now continue with the band coming around just like in my little sketch. So to do that I need to finish off the shoulder seams. So. I've got front and back right sides together at the shoulder seam. There is the little notch there matching up and I'm just going to be surging my edges together. Now this has 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance so I'm going to be trimming off a little bit of seam allowance as I go. And go right into that. I'm going to press to the back and then do a little edge stitch here. Good. And then I'll press again just to set that thread. You can see I also surged a center back seam there, trying to match up my stripe as best as I could with this loose stripe. So now I need to just measure this neck. And normally I would measure from center back to center front, but my center front has this big cutout. At the quarter inch sewing line, the gap is two and three quarters of an inch. So that is one and three eighths when I have it on the fold. 
then I'm going to put one and three eighths right at that edge here. And that's taking me up to 13 and a quarter. That's the half neck, right? I want another half of that again to get 75%. So six and five eighths. 19 and seven eighths. We'll call that 20 inches for the neck band. Plus a little bit of seam allowance, just a little bit. So 20 and a half inches. Okay. So here's the neck band that I cut extra long earlier. We'll cut it off to be 20 and a half. So I'm going to go in half right side together, sew here, and come right back. There's my center back edge sewn. And before I do anything else, I want to put a notch at the center front, marking the halfway point. So now normally I would be now folding this in half wrong side together and attaching it, right? But instead for this, I'm going to go right side together. I just have to finish off the bottom edge of the part that's in the middle of that V cutout. I said that that gap was two and three quarters, so that's an inch and three eighths on either side of the little notch. So I'm going to start sewing right there. I'm just going to sew that little smidge at about the edge of my presser foot. I'm going to snip to my last stitch and my last stitch. So no, I cannot do that center back seam first. That's got to be done after. Okay, forget that center back seam. So now I'm going to be pulling that all out through here. That's why I cannot have the center back seam sewn yet. Good. So now that that center part is sewn and pulled through, now I can close up that center back. So I went ahead and did that. And then I want to press this center part really well, like bring that seam right down to the edge while I leave these little cutouts. Most of this is going to go on now like a normal neck band. So I want to fold it in half and a nice crease all the way around and get your edges together. If they're not together, that can cause you problems. And I'm bringing the corner of this little cutout right to the edge of the V. There and here. And hopefully that just fits perfectly. And then the center back is pinned to the center back of the shirt. And now this part should have to stretch. I cut the neckband to be 75% of the neck edge so that it has to stretch. If it doesn't have to stretch, then it stands up tall. So I stretch and then just grab three layers and pin. I'm going to sew around and I didn't give myself much seam allowance. A little bit more would have been nice, but I'm going to hit that corner and come all the way around and hit that corner there. Okay, nailing that corner together before I pick up everything else, stretch, make sure my edges are all together, looking good. I'm just going to let the toe of the presser foot hang over the edge again. And I've got a hand in front and a hand in back, but that doesn't mean I'm pulling it through. I'm not pulling it through. I'm just keeping the correct amount of tension on it so that it goes through in that stretched out position. My bobbin thread is running out, but I think I have enough to make it to the end of this seam. When I peek under, I can see that there's still a bit of bobbin thread. <laughs> okay, I made it through. <laughs> okay, so now to serge this, I'm going to be starting and ending at a finished edge. So I'll show you a trick for both ends. So starting here, I want to come right up to where I'm beginning and just sew a couple stitches. Then lift up, pull my thread chain towards me, snuggle that right in, and then surge on top of that. And I can cut that off. So coming up to the end here, I'm going to surge until my needles have just cleared this. As soon as my needles are off, I'm going to stop. Okay, needles are off. Now I lift up, wiggle, wiggle, and flip. And come back in the other way. 
and chain off in a few inches in. Okay, both ends are pretty good. Oh, I think it's working. Okay, so I'm going to do an edge stitch. I think I might start stitching here at the blue because the white looks pretty sweet. It looks kind of perfect. I don't really want to mess it up. And again, I'm letting the toe of the presser foot hang off the edge. And I can feel back here that I am definitely catching that surging. Yes, I love that. Beautiful. Just gave the neckline a final press and, oh, lovely. Okay, the rest is gonna go together just like normal. I'll be surging on the sleeves, surge those side seams and do some hems. Enjoy the process and I'll show you at the end. The knit top, I like to set the sleeve first before I sew the side seam. So I just surge from notch to notch. It's just so much easier. So again, I'm cutting off a little bit of seam allowance because this is drafted for five eighths. And then the side seam, whole side seam, including the sleeve. And again, it's just from matching point to matching point, just organizing as I go. So now I'm reaching down to match up the bottom corner. I'll hold the bottom corner and I'll hold the halfway point. With one side seam done, I'll surge around the whole bottom end. And then the other side seam. it on and I love it beyond all measure but the sleeve is just a little long well a lot long I'll take off what two and a half inches off the sleeves and then I will finish it off with the band of the black and white the two bands that are 9 18 inches long good so the sleeve bands I've Sewn right side together, press that seam open, fold in half, give a nice little press all the way around, and that's going to sew in exactly like the neckband except no stretching. So I'm matching up seam to seam here, all three raw edges together, and then I'm just going to serge those in. And I think I will take that back to the regular machine and do a little edge stitch here just so after multiple washings it doesn't flip around the wrong way. Then little hem on the bottom and we're done. I never pin a hem like this. It's just, there's no point. You just end up organizing twice if you pin it first. So I'm just turning up pinky finger width so that I can ride the edge of my presser foot along the edge of the fabric. Keep myself nice and straight. This is such a full bottom, I don't need to worry about my thread breaking, so I'm just using a straight stitch. I could definitely do double needle here, that would be beautiful, but right now I'm just like the horse running for the barn. I want to I want to get her done and get this top packaged up and in the mail to my friend. Do you love that neckline? I know I do. I just love it. And I love that that's going to take all the attention up to her beautiful face and take any attention away from what she's self-conscious about with the bump on her abdomen. So she's got a lot of swing here, a lot of movement. I think that's just going to fit great. The sleeves came out nice. I like the proportion of the sleeve after taking off that two and a bit inches and then adding the band. I like that it reflects the black and white again and makes it kind of make more sense. So I'll package that up, mail it off to her. I'm hoping that'll lift her spirits a lot. So I'm sending her the top and lots of love and good positive healing vibes. I want to also give a special thank you to the people who've subscribed to my channel this month. Seeing that kind of growth in my channel is so gratifying. I cannot even tell you. After more than two years of hard work, it's such a joy to see my channel really growing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And so until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.